Hey, this is Kenneth, and today I'm in the Cal Poly Electrical Engineering Department's Microwaves Lab, where I'm going to show you how to calibrate a Enritsu MS4622B vector network analyzer. Vector network analyzers are used to characterize the reflectance and transmission of one or many port RF systems based on frequency. Before you use a vector network analyzer, it's important to calibrate it since the length of your feed line changes significantly electrically as you sweep in frequency from low to high. Um, since the vector network analyzer needs to know exactly where your system starts and the feed line ends, what you do is you set up the feed line exactly how you will use it and then you use known resistances and loads to then calibrate the vector network analyzer before you plug in your actual final system. So I'm now going to zoom in on the vector network analyzer and show you how that's done. We're looking at one of the two-port vector network analyzers. In our lab we have four two-port and two three-port vector network analyzers for more sophisticated tests. When you first power it up you're looking at a full, full display that shows all four transmissions. Reflectance in port 1 as a Smith chart, transmission between port 1 and port 2 as magnitude and phase, transmission between port 2 back to port 1 as magnitude and phase, and then the reflection in port 2 as a Smith chart. Now, when you perform a calibration, you want to make sure that first all of your feed line is arranged as it is required. I'm planning on testing a fairly small module right here, and so this is how I want to have it arranged. Then to begin the calibration, I will on the far right press the calibration button. It asks me if I would like to apply one of the calibrations that already exists or perform a calibration. Since we do not have any storage calibrations in here, we want to perform a new two-port calibration. It asks, are you sure? And we say yes. And we want to perform a full 12-term calibration. We want to exclude isolation because we're not so interested in the isolation between the two channels that are fully separated because that's just a lot of work for not as much payback. We want to perform a normal full broad spectrum 1600 and one point calibration and it then asks for our frequencies of interest. By default it starts at 10 megahertz and goes all the way up to 3 gigahertz which is the tool's full capacity. Right now, I happen to be interested in the 2.4 gig ISM band, so I'm going to set the lower and upper ranges. 2.3 gigahertz, and then I put my high range at 2.5 gigahertz. On the number pad on the right, it has order of magnitude buttons for gigahertz, megahertz, and kilohertz. You do need to be careful that as you're typing them in, you never have your stop frequency be lower than your start frequency because the vector network analyzer will complain. Now once you update your frequency sweep, the data points will be shown as incorrect, but once you open that menu, it updates and shows that you will be taking 1600 data points. Going to the next step, it asks you about what connectors you have on your feed line. These are SMA male jumpers, and so while it de defaults to the GPC 3.5 female, that's incorrect, and we need to go in for each port, click more three more times until you see SMA male, and we select that. Do the same thing for the second port, and we have our connectors set up. Reflection pairing refers to the calibration step where we're going to be using the open and short, and it asks if we would like to use a, either a mixed pair or a matched pair. Our calibration kits only have one of each, so we need to have a mixed so that we can put the short on one end port and the open on the other port and then switch them. Load type is broadband, and then these are other additional settings that aren't important. We now can start the calibration. The first step is calibrating the two ports with a broadband load. This is a 50 ohm broadband load, which is possibly the most expensive 50 ohm resistor you ever use in college. On the top right here, it asks port 1 broadband load, port 2 broadband load, and so I will install on each of the two ports a 50 ohm broadband load. 
as I install them, you'll notice that the Smith charts tend to go closer to their center point, which is uh, a good, which is a perfect impedance match. It's not perfect though, and so we will now perform a measurement. You can either measure the port one, measure port two, or you can ask it to measure both simul uh, one after the other. And so now the vector, ne vector network analyzer will very slowly sweep from our low range to our high range, which in my, my case right now is 2.3 to 2.5 gigahertz. But for whatever project you're working on, you'll need to select your own frequency range. And it very carefully measures the impedance of a quote perfect match from the RF generator of the VNA all the way to this quote perfect load. Once it's completed, it beeps, and we can then go on to the next calibration step. For the next calibration step, it specifies that port 1 should have an open load, and port 2 should have a short load. The calibration kits, in addition to the 250 ohm terminations, include two additional loads that are labeled short and open. The purpose of the open load tends to be a little confusing at first because it's often thought that, well, why don't you just not connect anything to the coax? The problem with that is that when the coax is unconnected, the connector is not engaged and the properties of the end of the coax is not predictable. By having a terminated nothing, it is very predictable and it actually and it gives you a much more meaningful calibration. So now that we've attached a short and an open, we will ask it to sweep in magnitude from our low frequency to our high frequency and it will measure the losses and the reflection on the two channels. Once completed, we go to the next cal step, and it asks for the reverse, short and then open. It's asking for them to staggered like this since we originally asked for a mixed termination. If we had asked for a match termination at the beginning, it would have asked us for two opens and then two shorts. But our calibration kit comes with one of each, and so we instead opted for the lower cost mixed calibration. And for the final step, it, it says connect the through line between test ports. 
in the calibration kit, in addition to the 50 ohm open and short terminations, it includes an SMA barrel jack, which is just two female connectors back to back. You'll notice that as soon as I screwed it in, the reflections, reflections on port 1 and port 2 have dropped and the transmission has gone up quite a bit since for the first time the two ports are finally connected. We'll now ask it to measure these precise values. Measurement completed, next calibration step, and it says calibration sequence complete. Press save recall to store calibration or press enter to proceed. Since these calibration readings are only valid for these specific pieces of coax in this specific configuration, there isn't much point in saving your calibration. And so we'll just move on, and at this point we're now ready to hook up our device under test to these two ports and run our experiments on them. So this has been Kenneth showing you how to calibrate a vector network analyzer. I hope that you found it interesting and like always questions and comments questions and comments in the comments section and thanks for watching.